Think of the airspeed indicator as how fast wind is moving past the aircraft. It is more of a wind indicator rather than how fast the plane is moving in relation to the ground. It senses the impact pressure of air against the pitot tube. This is compared against the natural weight of non-moving air that comes in via the static airline. The difference between impact air pressure and static air pressure gives us the airspeed. The airspeed you see on the airspeed indicator is simply called indicated airspeed. True airspeed does not equal indicated airspeed. This is due to the fact that there are more air molecules near the surface than at higher altitudes. In short, the air is less dense at higher altitudes. So, for a given power setting, aircraft actually move faster through the air than what is indicated via the airspeed indicator because there is less molecules entering the pitot tube. If you look at the table for this Cessna Skyhawk, at 75% power, we see the true airspeed is 114 knots at sea level, 118 knots at 4,000 feet, and 122 knots at 8,000 feet. So how can we find the difference between indicated airspeed and true airspeed? Well, for every 1,000 feet above sea level, the difference is roughly 2%. So 2,000 feet would be 4%, 2,000 divided by 1,000 is 2, and 2 times 2 equals 4. 5,000 feet would be 10%, and 10,000 feet would be 20%. So if our airspeed indicator shows 100 knots, at 2,000 feet it would be 100 times 4%, which equals 4, added to 100 equals 104. At 5,000 feet it would be 110 knots, at 10,000 feet it would be 120 knots. This is why you need longer runways at higher altitudes because although you plan to land at say 60 knots as indicated on your airspeed indicator, at 10,000 feet you are really landing at 72 knots. The same for takeoffs at such an altitude. Although you may still rotate at 55 knots as indicated on your airspeed indicator, you really need to get to an airspeed of 66 knots for the airspeed indicator to show 55 knots. You always want to land or take off at the same speed on the airspeed indicator no matter how high you are, so don't slow down or speed up. Just because your speed is higher at a higher altitude doesn't mean your goal is to fly at higher altitudes, and that's because your power also decreases at higher altitudes once again due to the air being less dense. Turbocharging is used often to overcome this to a degree, but it too has its limits. There are performance factors to consider which will be covered in future videos. Temperature also plays a part in true airspeed calculations and we'll get to that soon as well. Subscribe to this channel to learn more.